Hey guys, today I have a video for you on the psoas, or the ilio psoas to be specific. Um, and what I've found to be true about the psoas and massage therapists is that we either love it and obsess over it a little too much, or we're completely afraid of it. So today I want to talk about how to work on it properly and how to maybe not feel so intimidated by this deep hip flexor. First thing you'll notice that warming up the psoas muscle is not your usual warming up with Swedish strokes. Um, I can't really kind of dive in right away, so I'm using a lot of shaking and jostling and passive internal and external rotation of the hip, so the psoas crosses over the hip. I want to make sure the hip is nice and loose before I begin. Once I feel like my client is ready, I'm going to have them flex their hip and their knee so their foot is resting on the table. And I find the space between their belly button and their ASIS. For this demo, I'm coming from the opposite side of the table. I would usually be working on the same side, but I wanted to be able to project this very clearly on my video. Once I've positioned myself correctly, I have my client take a deep breath in, and as she exhales, I sink down deeply. It's really important to ensure that you're on the psoas, and the best way to do that is to have your client lift their leg just a little bit, and when she does, you will feel that muscle contract and fire underneath your fingertips. Right here is where she's lifting, I know I'm on the psoas, and I'm going to sink down a little bit deeper. Please note that it is extremely important to stay away from any deep pulse that you feel. So if you feel a pulse underneath your fingertips, you're on the aorta and you want to move away laterally. Once you've gotten down into the psoas, the work that we're doing here is really a deep compression and a deep friction. And those are really subtle in this very vulnerable area. I don't want to stay deep into this area for too long, so once I've created a little friction and eased that tension a little bit, I'm going to have my client contract the psoas again, but this time I'm sinking down against that contraction, and then as she releases down, she'll let go of her leg back down onto the table, I sink down a little bit deeper. And these minor movements can cause a huge change. You'll notice that my hand movements here and the work that I'm doing looks minuscule, but I guarantee you, your client will feel it on a very deep level. Exiting out of this area is equally as tricky as entering, so as your client takes a nice deep inhale, you want to pull your fingers out, moving with her abdominal cavity, and then creating a nice gentle movement, making sure that she feels like your fingers are not still sticking into her psoas. One of the best tricks I know for attacking the psoas is to also make sure you're really addressing the iliacus, and this is a muscle that I feel gets ignored a little too much. With this technique, I'm pulling my client's leg across the table, across their own body, and using my torso to anchor their knee so that I have a lot of control with what the femur does in the hip joint in the acetabulum. So as I lean into her knee, the femur is actually pulling away from the acetabulum just a little bit, creating a lot of space in the posterior hip and really softening the front of the hip and the iliacus. I'm using my right hand here, which you can see more on the right side of the screen, to support the posterior hip. And on the left side of the screen, with my left hand, you can see my thumb sinking into that softened iliacus. And then using movement, pulling towards me with both hands and then pushing into the iliacus to create a softening of that tight muscle. Releasing her leg back down to the table, I want to again make nice, so I'm just going to jostle the hips, pushing into the table and shaking down the legs. An alternative for clients who might not be as bendy or who might not respond well to that deeper work, having your client in sideline position is the perfect position to address the iliacus. It's really important to be in communication with your client throughout all of this work. Um, and as you're sinking into the iliacus here, you're going to wrap over the iliac crest and ensure that you're finding the belly of the muscle yet again. There's lots of nerves and lymph nodes and vessels that run through this area. So be certain that you are on the muscle and communicate to your client about what that feels like. As you start to sink in, you're going to pull the hip back a little bit and as you sink in deeper, use your other hand on the posterior hip to support the work that you're doing. 
as you start to sink in, you can then manipulate the hip into either a posterior or an anterior tilt, depending on if you want to soften or lengthen that muscle. Both techniques have their advantages. It just depends on whether you feel like the muscle is going to respond when it's pulled into a tight position, if it's really, really tight, or if it's going to respond to a softer position, such as a chronic injury or chronic pain. You guys have seen me engage a muscle and then sink in once it's released so many times over the course of my videos, and this is no different. I love this technique. I think it really works with the nervous system and brings the client's awareness to what's going on on such a deep level. So with this muscle, with the iliacus, I'm putting my hand down so that the resistance as she pulls her knee up to her chest is against my arm. I'm using my left thumb to then sink into that engaged muscle. And then when she relaxes, I sink in even deeper and I really soften up the iliacus and the entire anterior hip here. As I'm doing this, I can also use my right hand to manipulate the femur around a little bit and give the hip some big general global movement. The last thing I want to demonstrate here is how to work the insertion. A lot of the work that we do is into the origin and into the belly of the muscle, either the psoas or the iliacus, but they both come down and insert into the lesser trochanter. And this is one of those areas that massage therapists are a little bit tenuous about working. Um, and I want to ensure that we know how to work this region professionally and with effective results. So I've got my client's hip slightly flexed and slightly laterally rotated. And with the support of my knee, as I soften that attachment site, I'm sinking down through the adductors, making sure that I'm on the lesser trochanter and creating some friction. Because this space can be very sensitive, not just physiologically, but also emotionally, if I create a little bit of a shake or a jostle in combination with the friction that I'm applying on the lesser trochanter, it allows my client's nervous system to let go a little bit. It literally stops the, the pain response going up to the brain in the nervous system and helps the muscles to let go so that the client feels safe, the muscle feels like it can release, and the tension in the entirety of the hip can start to really let go on a very deep level. I want to say a couple of really quick things. Number one, thank you to my model who I used for the psoas work. Um, people who have kids often suffer from a lot of deep hip pain and that psoas and that iliacus can get thrown off. Those beautiful stretch marks you saw on my client's belly are from producing human beings, which is some of the hardest work a woman can do. So thank you for being so brave and getting on the table and demonstrating how amazing that work can be. And number two, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. So thank you guys so much. I love my little channel. I love my supporters and I love massage therapists. Keep being awesome and keep spreading the word. Thanks guys.